Hey guys, coming to you again from Depra to talk about high feed ramping, this time on an outside profile around a part. We'll look at two commonly used techniques and then show you how high feed ramping compares as we profile around a core to a depth of one inch using the tried and true stepping down with an end mill and doing a 2D profile cut. Then we'll take a round tool and do high efficiency or dynamic milling at full depth stepping in towards the part profile. And then the final approach we'll show you is high feed ramping starting from the top of a workpiece and executing a constant ramp as we go around the profile until we reach the finished depth. We'll talk a little bit about the pros and cons of each approach and let you decide what works best for your shop. Okay, so we'll start looking at what we have for material. We've got a roughly eight inch long by six inch wide by about five inches tall piece of steel. This is 4140 pre-hard. And for our profile milling routine, we're going to remove about three quarters of an inch of material around all four sides to leave a, a core standing in the middle. The depth of the program will be one inch and we'll do the same thing with three different tools. So the first tool we'll look at is just a typical uh, one inch diameter end mill. This one has uh, three flutes, is programmed for a feed per tooth of six thousandths and 600 surface feet. So that gives us 2300 RPM, 41 inches per minute. Uh, the depth cuts that we've programmed this at are 100 thousandths per pass. So for a total depth of one inch, that'll give us 10 passes. Uh, and there's our depth of minus one inch. So we've got our parameters established for the one inch indexable tool. And this is set up to do a traditional uh, step down profiling routine. So at 100 thousandths depth of cut per pass, We'll have a lead in and a lead out as it goes around the profile and then it will lead out, step down and then begin the next pass. So that's the traditional two dimensional profiling cut that all of us have, have seen and done. And with this approach you obviously have the shock to the tool of the lead in and the lead out. Any change in tool pressure is hard on the carbide and it's also a time waster because the tool is basically cutting air at those points. So finishing to the one inch depth, uh, we have a cycle time of seven minutes and basically 14 seconds for a traditional 2D profiling cut with a one inch indexable end mill. So now we'll move on to the dynamic milling approach. Uh, so same profile, same amount of material, same depth. We'll take a look at the tool that we're using for that. It looks like we've got a half inch diameter end mill. Uh, it's programmed to a surface footage of 800, which for 4140 pre-hard is a bit hot, but dynamic milling, uh, one of the benefits of it is that with the narrow width of cut, you can, you can actually run more speed and more feed uh, because the, the tool is only engaged for a small percentage of the time. So at 800 surface feet, that gives us a spindle speed of a little over 6100. And then the feed per tooth is programmed for 5 thousandths feed per tooth with a four fluted cutter. Uh, that's a heavy feed per tooth for uh, a round tool, but again, where the tool normally would be recommended to run it may be 2 thousandths feed per tooth. Uh, because of the chip thinning that we get with dynamic milling, it allows us to actually feed the tool uh, more aggressively on the feed per tooth. So instead of two thousandths per tooth, we can actually feed five thousandths per tooth, which gives us a feed rate of 122 inches per minute for this profile. Uh, our passes are set up with a width of cut of 50 thousandths, which is 10% of our tool. And it, like before, we're going to a one inch total depth. So let's have a look at what that tool path looks like. And start out somewhat slow. So here we've we're taking the corners off first and then the tool starts working its way in at 50 thousandths per pass. And you can see the tool stays engaged. That's another one of the benefits of dynamic milling is the tool tends to stay in the material as much as possible. And as we approach the finish, we see a total cycle time of basically three and a half minutes, three minutes and 33 seconds. 
So finally, we'll finish with the high feed profile ramping technique. So again, same amount of material per side and going to the same depth of one inch. If we look at the tool being used for that process, we have a two inch diameter high feed shell mill uh, programmed for 600 surface feet, which is 1150 RPM. The feed per tooth is 50 thousandths, which gives us a feed rate in inches per minute of 287, basically. Uh, the parameters for that tool, uh, like we've talked about before, we're ramping into the material and we're staying in that ramp until the, the cut is complete. Uh, you have the choice of angle or depth. For this motion, we want to maintain a 40 thousandths depth of cut per pass because we're on a 40 taper machining center. Uh, and then you can see on the linking parameters, our total depth is one inch just like before. So let's take a look at how that tool path runs. And again, we start immediately on the profile in the ramping motion and just continue circling the profile with a constant downward z-axis movement. And allowing that tool to run this way maintains even pressure on the inserts. And also, keep in mind with high feed ramping, the tool pressure is axial primarily, so it's driven up into the spindle instead of the side pressure that we get from either, uh, either style end mill that we looked at. So our cycle time with high feed ramping is two minutes and 40 seconds. So we'll clamp this part on Depra's Almatic Titan vise. Uh, this is a high pressure vise with a completely enclosed spindle, so it's impervious to chips and coolant. Uh, it provides us up to 9,000 pounds of clamping pressure, so we'll have great work holding rigidity. We'll also have a very low profile clamp because these T-Rex teeth grab onto the bottom quarter inch of the workpiece for our work. We'll just put a saw cut piece of material in there, no squaring up necessary. And it's just a simple matter of bringing, using the torque wrench to bring the front jaw forward. And we continue until we reach the set torque on the torque wrench and we're ready to go. Okay, so we looked at three different scenarios. The first scenario, the old traditional step-down profile milling approach, obviously much slower than either dynamic milling or high-feed ramping. Dynamic milling and high-feed ramping are two much newer methods. They've proven to be more efficient. Uh, so really it comes down to the two of them being the most capable or the most cost-effective for your shop. In a situation like this one where we only went to a depth of one inch, metal removal rates are comparable, so you look at the economics of the situation. A solid carbide end mill uh, that gets one use unless you send it for resharpening, uh, but then you also need to recode it. Uh, and then you need to reprogram it to a smaller diameter the next time you use it. There's some hassle there. Uh, with an indexable tool, you simply turn to the next cutting edge and fire it up the way you did before. Um, but let's look at a different scenario. What if the depth was two inches?
or maybe three inches like I have on this workpiece here. A solid carbide end mill or round tool is a lot less effective or practical as a choice in a scenario like that. An indexable tool, especially high feed ramping like we just executed, is run the same way. As you can see, this particular cutter can achieve over four and a half inches of reach uh, as it's set up and we run it the same way whether the total depth is one inch, two inches, three inches, or even four inches in depth. We can use high feed ramping for any of those scenarios without changing a thing. You certainly cannot do that with high efficiency milling or dynamic milling done with a round tool. So is this cost effective for your shop? You have to make that decision, but hopefully we've made a good case for high feed ramping for your profile needs.